Okay, so, um, oh, no, not it. So I'll just, it's just a couple of questions for me, uh, Reno. So just a, a strong start to the season um, with that performance against Glasgow. How, how important is that for Benetton and then setting you up for this weekend's game going to going to the RDS? Um, it's better to start with a win than a loss. It's as simple as that. But at the same time, you've got to bear in mind that championships or cups aren't won in, the, in week one. Hell, you don't even qualify for the quarterfinal in week one. So you just got to keep in mind that it's it's it was only one game. Nice to win. It was nice to put in such a dominant performance um, against a team that likes to hold the ball. We really showed um, that like our defense has stepped up. It's a big step up from last year. And um, so very happy with that. But yeah, we're just aware of trying to get a uh, a way of getting ahead of ourselves in terms of what it actually means in the greater scheme of things. Yeah, the um, the last couple of years we look back. It, obviously, there was the COVID disruption, but you know, the Benetton getting into the playoffs for the first time, winning the rep, the Rainbow Cup, they all seem like stepping stones in the growth of the club. Um, and Jack Conan was on beforehand, and you know, he's basically said the view from Leinster is Benetton have arrived. They're no, they're no longer underdogs. You, know, you expect them to be competing. Um, is that the view from inside your dressing room or, or how do you guys view where the club is at after the last four or five years? Yeah, it's a very flattering statement from a man that's been around for a while. Um, but I think we've I think we've stopped viewing ourselves as, as visitors. Um, my wife and I have recently been talking a lot about um, imposter syndrome. And I, can't, and I think... Um, Benetton is slowly getting rid, been getting rid of that um, imposter syndrome that they view themselves as as um, as visitors or less, yeah, less less than than capable when they play against some of the teams. Um, I think the amount of times that we arrive at the game and we're there to take part is definitely less and less every year, as far back as some of. I have obviously friends that have been here for a long time. I've only been here for one year, but um, I see it more and more that we arrive to games against high caliber opposition, um, lots of international boys and so on and so on. And our boys are ready to win. Our boys are ready to fight. They're not just there to take part. So um, it is a process. I don't think it happens over, overnight. Winning one game again doesn't change that um, significantly in and of itself, but Benetton, all year to compete, yes, Benetton aren't here to just take part anymore. Um, and hopefully we'll be able, we'll be proving that week in and week out. And uh, just one one final question then as well. Benetton, one of the few teams who've probably picked up some positive results in Dublin. Um, now, it has been a while since Benetton have played there, but there's, you know, in recent times, there's a win and a draw. But also there's been changeover in your squad. You know, of the guys who are remaining, is there is there anything to be learned from those positive experiences going into this weekend? Um, yes, I think it helps a lot that we've had boys, as you say. Um, Benetton, I think infamously or famously, I think it's famously in the sense, are a bit of a bogey side for for Leinster. Um, and I think it's it's a nice um, confidence boost for us to have had some of those boys that were in that in a match not not long ago. I think 2019 maybe when they won when they won there. Um, Tuva and some of the boys. I remember he scored a try in like extra time or something. So it's nice to have those boys around. It's nice to have um, players that that you that can recall a positive um, experience there at the RDS, which is a very difficult ground to go to. So. We'll definitely rely on them in terms of prep and in terms of when, when we're on the field. But ultimately, how many of Leinster's own boys played in that game? Um, uh, who knows? Ultimately, it's the 15 boys that will go on the field um, that have a job to do. And then those the eight substitutes, they'll have a job to do. Um, experience only gets you that far. Youth only uh, restricts you that much. At the end of the day, you have a job to do on the field. And Saturday, we have a job to do against Leinster. Arguably one of the most consistent sides in this competition. No, the most consistent side in this competition. Arguably one of the best. Um, we have a job to do and no one's going to do it for us. And as nice as the Leinster 
boys' comments are on Benetton and their view of Benetton, they're not going to make it easy for you um, at the RDS. So, yeah. Uh, Brandon and Dylan, just apologies. I'm going to ask one more. Uh, Reino, just uh, Zebre's almost victory against Leinster on the weekend, does, does that make things better or worse for you guys this weekend? Does it uh, maybe sharpen these, sharpen up the opposition more for you? I don't think it's going to have a, a difference. It's neither here nor there for us. If anything, and I think this alludes to part of your question from the previous question, actually. I think it's the last weekend and furthermore, some of the things that have happened in the last year or so within the, the borders of Italy is an indication that Italian rugby in general is moving somewhere. And um, that is a big, uh, it's a confidence boost to to our team, first and foremost. But furthermore, it's it's a reminder as well to some of us foreigners that are here. Um, we had to play, we had to learn a language, we had to learn culture and everything. But we also had to compete within our squad and then furthermore, so obviously in the competition. So I think if anything, it's it's an indication that Zebra in, in their own right are, are here to make changes as well. They finished last year with, I think, only one win or two wins. They're not just happy to to roll over and and give away log points again. They they, in their own right, are here to compete. So if anything, it's a warning shot for the fact that we have to play them twice um, in this year still. But Leinster are never going to be easier or harder to play against, in my opinion. I think if Debra gave them fifty, it would have meant nothing to us. We're still going to have to go and do a big job on Saturday, um, and hopefully come away with some points. Great, uh, Brandon, over to you. Yeah, Rona, good to, to chat to you again, man. Uh, 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 just first of all, just on what you just said to Adam there, I had a chat um, this earlier this week to Franco Smith, and he was telling me about some of the things, changes that they've made in Italian rugby, uh, the high performance system and identifying a lot of the youngsters coming through. And he was saying that they didn't really have those systems before. Um, you obviously, you've just alluded to some of it. I mean, is is it changing that fast in Italian rugby, these systems? And, and are they making, I mean, one game is one game, but are they making such a big difference? I think um, the kind of changes that someone like Coach Franco brought in his position, um, when he was head coach of Italy, he was just head coach as far as my understanding goes. But when he moved to the high performance developer or something, I can't remember his exact job description, but it became a lot more about growing the game um, beyond the borders of just Benetton and Zebra and and furthermore extending that high performance environment to younger boys and I think that's where they are getting their most reward if you look at Benetton squad now we have maybe if we had to pick our best best possible team no injuries um, I think there could be five or five boys maybe in our starting lineup under the age of 22. And I think that's indicative to a system that's coming two years, three years in the making. And um, we are reaping the reward there. Of, and the Italian national team, furthermore, will, will also reap the reward potentially a year or two further down the line because obviously international rugby is on another level. But for now, Benetton, first and foremost, I think we are benefiting largely from an Italian rugby system that is giving us good fruits and we are, we are bearing the fruits thereof. You, you obviously, I just wanted to find out also, you, you obviously, one of the guys who's gone overseas, obviously, to, to experience something different, to experience a new culture and to play a bit of rugby overseas. Since the South African teams have come in, how's, how's the feeling been there amongst uh, amongst guys, the expats, the guys like you who are playing for overseas clubs? Uh, would you want to be back in South Africa and play for those clubs now that they're in Europe? Or are you quite enjoying the the, the change of culture? Yeah, I think, I, suppose, I think, sorry, and I suppose to ask you in addition to that, also if you if you're planning on trying to qualify for Italy at some point. Um, the Italian qualification. Let me start there. I, if it happens, it happens. It, it's a thing that's going to take a while for me since I, I played for South Africa. I played sevens for the, I obviously played for the Blitzbok. So there is a way, but it's down the line. I have to use Olympic systems and things. So. That's not at the forefront of my mind, and it's certainly not a major motivator as to why I'm here currently or why I would definitely consider staying. Um, so, yeah, that the, the, I would not want to be back in South Africa now. I think 
the only thing that they've, shall I say, that they've done that I am a little bit jealous of, they obviously played, they had two teams in the, in the playoffs, well, three, the, the Sharks, well, three teams in the playoffs, they hosted a semi and a final, and then they, they freaking, one of the teams won it. So I, I wish or I hope um, that I could be in a playoff game. I could be competing for for silverware. That's the only thing right now that I that like would call me back. But at this point, I'm genuinely loving living here. My my wife and I we enjoy the life. We we sit busy setting up ourselves here. The rugby culture it's so different, but it's so nice at the same time. The fans are awesome. So um, yeah, and it's an enriching experience as you mentioned. Um, Flip, we're learning a new culture. We're learning a very very I, we're finding it very difficult to language, learning a difficult language. So all of those things put together, um, yeah, just just really happy with with where we are right now. I was going to say one of the things also with the competition structure this year that's changed um, is is the fact that there, there are less weekends or no weekends where it overlaps with international duty, if I'm right, um, and and so so that that has always been a bit of a problem in Pro 14 and URC. Where you've had to play with without your international players as such, that, does that give the side a bit of extra belief that uh, uh, you know to try and achieve that consistency? Because that's probably something Benetton they've done had a couple of good one-off games, but just through a season that consistency to get you know get get into the the top four of the competition might be lacking a bit. Yeah, and and speaking to that potentially, um, that's where depth. And budget came into play, and, and perhaps that's where Benetton fell fell out of the running largely. Because also, if you think last year, um, we had maybe at one stage in the international window, twenty seven boys not available, and that that's two teams gone. And so we were relying on um, fringe players, permanent players, academy boys coming through. So while again it is. <clears throat> Sorry, well, again, it's testament to um, some of the systems in place that we have access to those players. Um, there's certainly a big difference between, say, a, a 19-year-old playing his second game and then he's jogging out against, if I think Leinster last year, we had boys 19, 20 playing in their first game and, and then you have high-quality boys on the other side wearing blue jerseys. It was, it was really tough. Um, just the level of execution, the level of um, conditioning, the level of the clarity of mind that they come with, obviously, years of experience. So, yeah, all of that to say, I, yeah, we, we, we definitely will benefit from, from not having games in that windows. I hope it remains that way because, obviously, last year we were also meant not to play really in the international window. And then because of COVID, a few games got moved out. And then we ended up playing the Sharks with all of their Springboks. We played Munster, Glasgow, and Leinster, obviously, in that window. And even if Leinster lose 15 players to Ireland, they still have high-quality boys that have played in quarterfinals, in finals. So, um, so yeah, they have to compete for 18 weeks. Otherwise, you're not going to be... You're not going to partake in the, the playoffs. It's as simple as that. Last one just from me. Just um, Your form last season was, was quite good. You were one of the top point scorers in the competition. Um, you started off pretty well as uh, well this weekend again as well. I'm, I'm sure Franco wasn't smiling th this weekend after that, but uh, just your goals for the season and what, what you want to achieve? I think for me, it's important that I'm on the field. Um, I genuinely look on back on my time in South Africa, not as time lost, because I learned a lot. I played with um, some awesome rugby players. I played with very professional players, guys that played for Springboks and so on. So I've learned a lot. but time lost in terms of time spent on the field. I don't, don't have many super rugby caps, don't have many curry cup caps. Um, guys that I started with now have 60, 70 super rugby curry cup caps walking around. So I think for me, it's important to be on the field. Um, that's where I grow the most, but it's also where I get the most reward, obviously, from all of my effort that's that I've put in over the years gone by and furthermore so now. So I think first and foremost, physically being able to play week in and week out, and then finding a way to contribute because this is a long competition. You won't play 18 games. Um, there's We're a big squad. So the weekends that I'm not playing, still being able to, to contribute to the team, be that in preparation in terms of making plans or be that 
um, when I'm training as the team ABCD whatever against the team that will play the weekend and just doing my best to to um, yeah prepare the boys so that and then um, yeah just fulfill my responsibilities um, I now am the the goal kicker as well I didn't start out that way last year and that um, so yeah I take my responsibilities serious and I just wanna I just want to make the boys who the boys who miss out on the opportunity to be the goal kicker or whatever to justify the the decision. And the same goes for if I'm wearing the 15 jersey, 11 jersey, 10 jersey, whatever it may be, um, justify why I've been selected. I am a, after all a foreigner in the place of some. It could be a local boy, um, so I need to earn the respect of of my own teammates, my coaches, and then furthermore, so the the supporters and the local people. Um, yeah, since this is not not my home, first and foremost. Thanks, Rainer. Cheers. Doesn't you up? Is it, uh, <laughs> can I throw a few questions out there? <laughs> Please do. Uh, Cool. Um, hi, Rainer. Dylan Jack from SA Rugby Magazine here. Um, just, um, Brendan just mentioned your excellent form last season, and you've carried that into this season, obviously, with a good start against uh, Glasgow. Um, what would you say is the key to, we've seen sort of foreign, but not only South Africans, but other sort of foreign players struggle to sometimes adjust to when they move to France or Italy. What do you think has been the key for you in sort of adjusting so quickly and finding your feet so quickly in Benetton? I, I don't know. I, I don't think I'm doing any one thing uh, better or different than, than maybe someone else. Um, I think I have to give credit to the, the environment. Yeah, the environment is very welcoming. Um, there are obviously, there have been a lot of foreigners coming in and out of, of Benetton, the club as well. So they, they are quite um, welcoming and open to, to us foreigners. I think that first and foremost is is very, very helpful in terms of your arrival, your initial arrival, and then just trying to integrate um, after that. If I had to give advice, and I don't think I'm in a position to give advice, but if I had to say anything, I think that the people here appreciate your effort to adjust to them rather than you're trying to force the environment to adjust to you. And that's something that, uh, like my wife and I have been talking about, we've been wanting to immigrate for a while, play rugby abroad um, for a few years now. And so we've been talking about uh, coming with an open mind. And um, it's one thing to arrive with an open mind. It's another thing to being, be able to maintain that for however long you stay here. So I think if I had to say anything, I would say that we genuinely making an effort to do that. It's not perfect. Um, we're not doing it right every day. And sometimes you just want to have like bourgeois, you know, but it just is what it is. You you do the best you can with what with what you have, and um, I think I'm really also I'm really lucky that we've made really good friends and family. Our support structure from still back in South Africa, um, people that are always open to phone call, give advice, give help, or just to listen. Um, yeah, I think all of that put together puts us puts me in a very favorable and fortunate position where um, I can just go every day to, to training train as hard as I can, prepare as best I can, and then on Saturday um, go into a game with, with one focus and that's to play play well. So, And just in terms of your um, fitness, obviously you had a couple of bad injuries when you were playing in South Africa. Um, have you changed anything around the way that you train or something that, that's allowed you to stay fitter and on the field for longer? Yeah, I think I don't know. I, I didn't have that many injuries, to be fair. That wasn't the reason I didn't play so much rugby in South Africa. Oh, oh. I had one big one that I can recall now. I tore my pick um, in 2017. But other than that, my lack of selection <laughs> was largely not due to injury. So, as I say, in those years and those times, um, I was working really hard, maybe behind the scenes and not necessarily getting a lot of reward for that. Um, but I think I'm now being the fruits of the, the, those experiences. I was able to say, not playing on Saturday, so I put in an extra session, maybe on the field kicking, as an example. So I just think I, I'm able to recall that um, the compounded effect of just being in good, healthy systems. Um, and now, yeah, 
lucky lucky to be where I am. Sorry, there's a B at the phone. If you hear buzzing, um, so yeah, lucky to be where I am. Happy to be where I am. And um, we are working really hard. The one thing that's changed big time is they they big on the gym here. Yeah. Um, it doesn't look like it when you look at me, but genuinely, genuinely, the boys get stuck in here. Yeah. So it's been a bit of an adjustment for me. Um, but yeah, we work hard with Jim. Jim Maloney is our conditioning coach. Um, I also think a guy like Andrea Mazi. We've been I've been working hard with him. He's obviously our, our backline coach, and just um, working with someone of his experience, it really helps that he played as many professional rugby matches as he did at some of the best clubs in the world. He played many international games for Italy. So, um, I, as I say, I think just fortunate that um, I had the experience in my past, experiences in my past, combine that with the current environment and someone like Mazi that's able to um, yeah, be hard on me um, when I do nonsense and be equally hard on me when I do good things and just yeah, remind me about processes and stuff, I think. Yeah, thanks.